Hi everybody, welcome back to Karen Puzzles. Today I'm going to be answering more of your questions because there were way too many questions to get through in the last Q&A video. Little secret, um, I'm filming this right after filming the last one. I just changed my shirt to make it look like it was a different day, but there's still construction outside, so if you can hear it, I'm so sorry. But um, let's get into the questions because I feel like once again, I'm gonna be talking for a while. All right, here's a question about whether I would want my significant other to enjoy puzzles. If I had a significant other, either I would want them to have their own hobby that they are into like as much as I'm into puzzles so we can each kind of have our own thing, or I would want them to be into puzzles enough that they would do their own puzzles so that we could do our own puzzles like next to each other, but we wouldn't be working on the same one because I can only do puzzles alone. It is so frustrating working with other people when they're moving all your pieces around. <laughs> so either way, like whether they're into them or not, like don't work on my puzzle. Just, just don't, just don't even touch it. All right, I've gotten a lot of questions about whether I ever ended up hanging the 5,000 piece uh, gradient puzzles, both of them, now that I've done both. It is a project that I definitely do want to do. I just have not gotten around to it yet because I'm gonna have to like measure my hallway to make sure that it's even and centered. And then I feel like I'll need to have a second person to help like hoist it up onto the wall and get it level. And with uh, the pandemic, I just can't really have people over. So <laughs> um, unfortunately, that project has had to been put on hold, but the puzzles are still together in sections in the boxes. So at some point when I can have a friend over to help me with it, I still am planning to hang them up on the wall and make a whole video about how to do it. I just haven't been able to do it yet. All right, so um, makeup, <laughs> you know, I don't know if you've noticed, but literally in every single one of my videos, I have the exact same makeup look. I only know how to do one look. <laughs> I have a video on my old channel where I go through, I do a makeup tutorial of the one look that I know how to do. <laughs> and I made that video probably like four years ago now, I don't even know when, like three years ago, and I still literally just rebuy all of the exact same products and I do it the exact same way. Also, I am neither a makeup every day or a once in a while type of person. I am a makeup while I'm filming and then immediately wash it off type of person. <laughs> when I'm like out and about and doing things, I'll put on makeup and it's fine, but when I'm just here alone in my apartment, like I feel like I just focus on it too much. And when I'm not in front of the camera and nobody's looking at me, I just hate the way that it feels on my skin. So I just immediately take it off. And if I'm not filming, I don't put any on. Ooh, I got a question about my nail polish. So again, I have been wearing the exact same nail polish for years now. I just keep repurchasing this one. It's my favorite because it is very close to my skin color. So when it starts to chip, it's not quite as obvious as if it was like a very bold color. So this is uh, Deborah Lipman. It is the color Stargasm. Oh, so this is not a question, but this is referring to the table that I have out in my dining room. And I would just like to say, no, you do not need to get one. I should not have bought this. Please do not buy this table if you are a jigsaw puzzler. So when I was redecorating my apartment, when I, you know, brought all the stuff in here to my studio, I needed a new dining room table and I bought one on Ikea because it's cheap and I could get it delivered. So since I was buying it online and only looking at the pictures online, I didn't realize that the three boards don't fit together snugly and that there's actually a little gap between each of them. And it is the perfect size gap for puzzle pieces to fall through onto the floor. So sometimes I'll put a piece of foam board on top of the table so that I have a completely flat surface. Sometimes I'll just deal with it and puzzle right over the gap, but I'm constantly dropping pieces if you are a puzzler do not buy this table, I don't recommend it. All right, our next question is what direction I hope that puzzles go in in the future. 
And the thing that I'm really liking these days is seeing puzzle companies that really put a focus on the artists who make the images on their puzzles. So this is something that Eboo does really well. Um, Lemonade Pursuits, I just did a bunch of their puzzles over Christmas, and also Good Fit is a new brand to me. Um, they do it really well, like literally on the box, they have a little bio or at least like a link to the artist's website. And then on the website, they have more information about the artist. And so I just love learning about all of these different independent illustrators, especially women and people of color and people whose art may not have been celebrated in the same way that hopefully it can be now by putting them on jigsaw puzzles so that we can all really enjoy it and really get to know the art really well. Okay, so this next question, I have an answer to it and I don't think it is one that most of you want to hear. Basically, so at the end of last year of 2020, I basically spent three months working nonstop, literally did not take a day off. I was so exhausted that I also didn't exercise at all for like three months. And I started getting this pain like right in the back of my neck that I had never had before. I didn't know what was going on. I was just like hoping it would go away. And then at the very end of last year and the beginning of this year, I have started exercising and working out again and that pain has completely gone away. So my answer to not get sore and pain while you're puzzling is to exercise, to use your body, to use your muscles. I mean, it's just like any other activity that has you in one spot for extended periods of time. You have to get up and you have to move and you have to use your muscles and stay strong. Before the pandemic, I was seeing a personal trainer twice a week at a CrossFit gym for like five years and I was running a lot. I was in really good shape. So I honestly never got the types of aches and pains that other people have told me that they get. Although I'm not a doctor, this is not medical advice. Um, please talk to your doctor if you have anything that you're actually concerned about. And I know that other people do have actual medical problems that I'm not trying to downplay. Ooh, okay, this is an interesting question. Now that my channel is growing, do I feel more pressure to do crazier puzzles? And I would say like, yes, in a way, but it's not really pressure. It's more just that now that I know more about jigsaw puzzles and I know more about what types of puzzles are out there, I just want to do all of those interesting puzzles. When I started this channel, I basically had a couple favorite brands that I wanted to talk about and I was doing very traditional puzzles. And now that I know that there are so many interesting puzzles in the world. I just, I wanna try them all. And, now, and since I know that you guys are responding to that, you know, it just kind of works both ways. Something that I guess I've learned is that you need somewhat of a hook to get people to care about jigsaw puzzles. Like you need to give them something interesting to want to learn more about. And so I'm not just gonna keep doing like the same kind of plain, normal jigsaw puzzles in every video because that would get so boring. So now I'm on eBay like looking up cool vintage puzzles and seeing what like new puzzles are out there and I'm just so excited to do all of them. I wouldn't say it's pressure, it's just me being more excited to do a bigger variety of puzzles. Okay, this is another question that I get a lot. Um, what do I do with my completed puzzles? So besides the 5,000 piece puzzles, which as I said, I've kept together in sections in the box, pretty much all of my puzzles I take apart. And a lot of people like can't believe that and would never take apart their puzzles. But since I do puzzles so quickly and since I do so many puzzles, like there's no way that I can keep them all together. I would have a stack a mile high. And if I started gluing all of them, other people wouldn't be able to do them. Like that would be it, it would be done. Since I can do a thousand piece puzzle in like four hours, um, I don't really have an emotional attachment to it. It's more about the process of putting it together for me than it is about the finished product. So there are often times where I put a puzzle together and then like, 
five minutes later I take it apart. So my favorite puzzles, like either the ones that I want to do again or the ones where I just love the design on them, I'll keep them obviously behind me. And then the puzzles where I do them once and I feel like I'm not going to return to them, I have started donating them to these um, puzzle basically like little free libraries, but for puzzles. There is this couple who runs them here in LA and I'm just so happy to pass them on, kind of get them out of my house because I have so many puzzles literally everywhere. And so now other people can enjoy them too. And before you ask, I'm not going to sell these puzzles or give them away to viewers because I just don't have time to be like shipping things up and shipping things up. I don't have time to be like packing things up and shipping them out. You know, like how would I pick who they go to? I'd have to go to the post office all the time. It would be expensive. So I'd prefer just to put them out into my own local community. And I hope that some of you guys can do the same sort of thing. Oh my God. That was the last question. <laughs> Wait, why did I think I had so many more questions? That's it. All right, so this video will be a little bit shorter than the last one, but I hope you liked um, hearing all of my answers to all of your questions. Hopefully I'll do these a little more often, so make sure that you follow me on Instagram if you want to um, know when I'm asking for more questions. And oh, we need a code word. I'm so bad at code words when there's not like, a puzzle to show you. Your code word will be 2021 because, you know, I will say we got like five days into 2021 and I knew it was the new year, obviously, but I had never thought about the fact that we were in 2021 and it just feels so futuristic and I cannot believe that we're here. Does that make sense? I probably sound really dumb right now, but <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. Keep on puzzling and I'll see you all in the next one.